Have you ever felt intimidated by that huge 90-page VexIQ game manual and the dozens and dozens of questions in the official Q&A site and realize the five-minute video overview just isn't enough? Well, I'm Coach Time, and I'm going to be creating a video series going through the sections of the game manual to help teams come up to speed quickly. I started my first team about 10 years ago when my daughter was in elementary school, and I have loved it ever since. Uh, as an event partner and a head ref, I see teams coming to the competition sometimes not knowing all the rules, and so I'm hoping that this video series will help. Let's jump in. Let me start off by saying this is not a replacement to reading all the rules and this is not an official VEX video, but I'll be going through my interpretation of all the scoring rules. As in past years, Mix and Match has both a teamwork challenge and a skills challenge. This video will focus only on the scoring for the teamwork challenge, but more videos are coming. One last note, uh, at the time of the creation of this video, the latest game manual was version 2.0 from early September and I only have access to the questions in the Q&A from that same time period. So be sure to check the latest manual and Q&A. This is especially important because this is the first year that I can remember where the Game Design Committee has some interesting statements about making adjustments throughout the season, including adjusting the field layout, and most importantly, potentially changing the scoring to encourage teams to use underutilized goals. That's interesting. Okay, let's jump in. The scoring objects in this year's game are actual pins and beams from the kit of parts, but scaled up to 10 to 1 size. Nice job, Game Design Committee. But these parts have no scoring value until they're put into a stack. Okay, so a stack is defined as two or more of those scoring objects. Each pin in a stack is worth one point. So this stack on the right is worth two points. We saw this in the VEX overview video. Okay, a stack with three pins is worth three points. So far, so good but the color of the pins in the stack defines the first bonus points. So let's review the bonus points. Stacks with two colors in them get five bonus points. So the stack on the left is worth seven points. Stacks with three colors in them get 15 bonus points. So the stack on the left is worth 18 points. Just by adding that red pin added 11 points to the stack. So in summary, this is just to remember this. Uh, if a stack has two colors, it gets five bonus points, and if it has three colors in it, it gets 15 bonus points. Again, so far this is just a review of the VEX video, but let's get to the more confusing parts of the game. So, the beam is a scoring object, so it kind of acts like a pin in a stack. Uh, so this is a stack of two scoring objects, but the beam gets 10 points instead of just one for the pin. Plus, the beam's color is wild. The video shows the beam switching between red, blue, and orange, but I actually just find it easier to think of it as its normal gray. Since this stack has a gray and orange scoring object in it, it gets five points for having two colors. However, it gets a little more complicated here, and it's confusing in the video, but each stack with a beam in it also gets 10 points as a matching goal bonus. Even though it's not a goal, I'll explain why it's named that later, but for now, this stack is worth 26 points. 10 for the beam, 10 for the goal bonus, 5 for the color bonus, and 1 for the pin. Beams can also help form stacks of three scoring objects. Since the beam's gray is the third color, that means this stack gets 15 points for the color bonus, and it gets that extra 10 points as a matching goal bonus, bringing the total here up to 37 points. Okay, let's talk through this image from the video, as it's really important. What's super interesting is that a beam can be part of multiple stacks. In this example, there are three separate stacks, one, two, three, that share a single 10-point beam. Each of these three stacks have three colors, so they each get the 15-point color bonus. One, two, three. Each of these stacks also get the 10-point matching goal bonus for 30 more points. Add in the 10 for the beam, and the six points for the pins brings this stack's value up to 91 points. Here's a slight variation from the Q&A. How many points do you think this is worth? Feel free to pause and try to guess. As in the previous example, there are three stacks here. One, two, and three. Each stack gets five points for having two colors, gray and orange. Each stack also gets the 10 point matching goal bonus, again, because they have a beam in them, and the score for each pin and the beam brings this up to 58 points. Let's touch briefly on the detailed requirements for what's a valid stack and what isn't. First, it must be roughly vertical. So these tipped over objects are worth nothing. 
Second, it must be fully nested with no perceptible gap between objects. So these two are not a stack. While the orange and the red here are a stack, but the blue doesn't count as being part of the stack as there's a perceptible gap there. Lastly, it's not a stack if any part of the stack is touching a robot in any way. So none of these pins count as being a stack. Remember, it can be rules updates or Q&A updates, so always check the latest documentation. Okay, just when you wanted to say, I can't take any more scoring details, there's a few more. The VEX video touches on these, and luckily they aren't too complicated. There are multiple different goal types on the field. There's the square goal, the triangle goal, the floor goal, and the standoff goal. Luckily, these are fairly straightforward. Uh, if you place a stack, remember that's two or more fully nested game objects, into a goal, and the bottom pin's color matches the goal, you get a 10-point matching goal bonus. Here's an example where the bottom pin's color matches the square goal's color. So this stack qualifies for the 10-point matching goal bonus. Add in the 15 points for the three colors uh, and the three pins, and the total here is 28 points. If you're thinking to yourself, I've seen that term matching goal bonus before. Well, good for you, because remember earlier when I talked about how stacks with a gray beam in them get a 10-point matching goal bonus? Well, that's the same bonus as the matching goal bonus here. Basically, Vex decided that any stack with a gray beam in it gets the same bonus, even if it's not in a goal. That's kind of strange. Key note here is stacks can only get one matching goal bonus. So this stack has the matching goal bonus because it has a gray beam in it, so it's worth 38 points. Putting this stack into a floor goal, however, does not get any extra points because it already has the matching goal bonus from the beam, but it does look pretty cool. So the only tri tricky part for goals is defining their boundaries. For the square goal, the pins just need to be completely inside the green lines I added here, uh, which means inside the little vex ramps and the field perimeter. This goal can only hold one stack. The floor goal is defined by the outside edges of the white line. The pins can be on the white line, but they can't cross outside it. So the pins on the left are just inside the floor goal. The pins on the right are not. This goal can hold a maximum of four stacks. Even if you can get more than, fit, more than four to fit inside of the, the boundary here, only four will count. And lastly, the triangle goal, which is super easy, because you just need the pin to be inside the PVC pipe and the field perimeter. This goal can hold a max of three stacks. The last and maybe most interesting goal is the standoff goal. Any stacks placed on this goal earn an extra 10 points, but since it's also a normal goal, stacks on it also get the matching goal bonus if the bottom pin is orange. So having a stack on the standoff goal gets 10 points for the standoff goal bonus, plus since this stack has an orange pin at the bottom, which matches the color of the standoff, it also gets the 10 point matching goal bonus. Add on the five point color bonus, plus the points for the pins, gives this stack a total of 27 points for just two pins. Let's get extreme. Remember our 91 point stack from earlier? Since this actually has three stacks on it, when placed on the standoff goal, each stack earns an extra 10 points, so 30 more points here bringing the total up to 121 points. So this is a huge score. Okay, there's only two more ways to earn points. There are four starting pin supports on the field that each start the match with a pin on them. You get two points for every starting pin removed from a starting pin support. Lastly, if your robot finishes the match touching at least two scoring objects, you'll get an extra two points. You can be touching two scoring objects or touching one object that's fully nested with another object. They should call that the transitive property of scoring objects. But remember from earlier, if your robot is touching a stack, it no longer counts as a stack, but you will get these two points. No, multiple robots can be touching the same scoring objects and both will get the two points. And pins on starting pin supports can also be used. So in closing, Here's a snapshot summary from the game manual, linked below, showing all the scoring. Yep, we talked about each pin in a stack being worth one point. Beams in a stack are worth 10 points. Stacks with two colors in them get a five point bonus. 
stacks with three colors in them get a 15 point bonus. The fun matching goal bonus that applies to stacks in a goal where the bottom pin matches the color of the goal or any stack that has a beam in it. All stacks that are on a standoff goal get an extra 10 points. Clearing those starting pins gives you two points. And finally, as we just discussed, each robot in contact with two or more scoring objects at the end of the game will get two points. You know all the scoring now. I hope this was helpful. Keep an eye out for more videos and have a great season.